Welcome back troops. Now then, today what we're going to talk about is producing colloidal silver. But because my first video on actually producing colloidal silver was taken down by YouTube as being inappropriate, I'm going to keep this very simple and I'm just going to show you how I make colloidal silver. And I'm not going to go into any detail as to what it is the history of its use or why I and other people occasionally use it. Most people, well let's start first of all, the three basic things you need to produce colloidal silver. You first of all need silver of course and I use silver in the form of silver bullion bars because they've got a fairly large surface area and they are of a known quality. The second thing you need is you need distilled water. You can't just use any old water because there'll be chemicals dissolved in it which are going to interact and cause things you don't want. So you can buy so, uh, distilled water or you can make it yourself. Now I make it myself, it's a fairly tedious task at the moment the way I make it and it's not a particularly good distilled water but it's way better than tap water. And the third thing you need is electricity and most people just use one, two, three or four nine volt batteries and you can Connect 9 volt batteries in such a way that you can add the voltage together. So I've got three 9 volt batteries here. So if I clip them together in such a way, I can get from those two the positive there and the negative there. I can just clip one of these on each terminal, and out the end will come 27 volts. You don't need 27 volts but there are reasons why it's advantageous to have a higher rather than a low voltage such as 12 volts and some people quite successfully use 12 volts. It might just take a little longer in the initial stages. So with those three and a jar obviously to put your distilled water in and dangle your silver in you can make colloidal silver but the quality of that colloidal silver will be fairly unknown if that's all you've got. So the way I make it is with basically that method but I use a little bit more complicated equipment and I say a little bit more complicated. It's got two dials on the front, it's got some switches on it, it's got some LEDs on it but it's not complicated. Inside there is a transformer so I can run it off the mains. The transformer gives me 30 volts and I feed the 30 volts to the two electrodes through a current limiting or a current regulating diode. And a current regulating diode is a little electronic device. It's very simple. You just put it in line with the circuit and it will limit the current to those two electrodes to whatever that little tiny device is designed to. In my case, two milliamps. So, I'll give you a look in the box, uh, a little tour of the inside of the box, but there's not a lot in it. It might look complicated, but there's not a lot in it. I have a no, number of, uh, so with that then I can monitor the voltage, I can monitor the amperage. I also have a thermometer uh, which I will stick on the side of the jar so I can monitor the temperature just so I can get some idea of the temperature. And I've got a little heater on the side of the jar and that's not so much to warm the water up although that will speed up the um, process a little bit 
but it's more just to generate thermal flow because I, I don't have something that spins around and keeps the, the liquid moving like that so I just keep the liquid moving gently by thermal siphoning with a little heater gets hotter one side than the other side and that promotes some cycling. Now the other things I have, I have a, a, a couple more tools which help me. Um, I use a toothbrush. Uh, what I use a toothbrush for is these uh, bullion bars become tarnished in quite a short time actually and I use a bit of toothpaste and the toothbrush just to, just to clean them up and that's so that's all that's for I'll do that on the start and if I'm doing a fairly big batch I might need to do it halfway through I've got an instrument called a total uh, dissolved solids meter which actually measures the resistance of the fluid so I can see what my start resistance is and I can see what my end resistance is whenever I decide to, to end the process. Um, so it, it gives a reading in parts per million, although it is in fact measuring resistance. And just to give me a further indication of the process as it goes along, I've got a laser, a red laser. I don't know whether you can see that red laser. But uh, when I shine this through the fluid initially you shouldn't see the beam in the fluid but as, the, as we progress and you get microscopic particles of silver in that water you'll see the beam reflected from those particles although those particles are way too small to see as particles with the naked eye you're seeing the reflected laser beam the other thing I've got is the colloidal silver that you produce is light sensitive, photosensitive. So you want to keep it in out of direct sunlight and you also want to keep it in a dark glass because it will go dark over time. So that's my equipment, that's the, the uh, unless we want to, you know, talk about a funnel for pouring things from here to there and sometimes if I've got some big bits of silver oxide uh, floating about in the finished mixture I might also use a filter as well. Um, but that's it really. Um, so i just got to set the thing going, monitor it over a, about a three or four hour time period because it's a, I, I deliberately set it to be a reasonably slow process uh, and then you collect the fluid at the end. The hardest thing about it for me personally is producing the um, producing the distilled water which I'm working on a better method of doing that because that's that's quite tedious. So I'll give you a quick tour of the inside of the box and then we'll actually get started. So the inside of the box then basically consists of that big black transformer that pushes out actually slightly more voltage than I need. So I've got a little voltage regulator down there that locks that output voltage at 30 volts. You see a few little um, resistors in there which are just so the lights on the front uh, work at the right uh, voltage. I've got the voltmeter there to the left, the ammeter to the right, a couple of switches that switch the power on, uh, one switch that's not really connected because that'll, that'll do the, the heater on the jar, but at the moment I'm running it off a separate transformer because I haven't worked out um, what sort of resistor I need uh, so I can run it off the, the 30 volt transformer. Then there is a little, the, the, the real secret um, ingredient to this is a little, little tiny, maybe I can point with the laser, 
you, it's so tiny you virtually can't see it but just there is a little tiny device which limits the output current to 2 milliamps. So over time as more silver gets deposited in your fluid and the resistance of the fluid goes down the current doesn't increase because that little device locks it to 2 milliamps. So let's get started. That'll do. That'll do. She knows there's something afoot. She wants to be involved but she doesn't know what it is yet. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is leave this as part one and if this doesn't get censored by uh, YouTube then I shall put up part two which will be going through the actual making of it in a day or two. You're going to get down. Good dog. So hopefully I'll catch you in a day or two with the making, the actual making of it which obviously I've already done. So, we'll leave it at that end.